see what you mean. Arapahoes? Yeah. We gotta help whoever's in that wagon. Get out. Look, he's still alive. He's waving them goodbye. Yeah, maybe for a good reason. Like maybe he's supplying them with rifles and whiskey. Let's find out. Biggest horse I've ever seen. We'll see. How did you do? Just, just a minute here now. That, that, that'll be all for now. That's all. That's it. We'll see. I, I didn't know there was anyone else around except me. My name is Hershey, Jameson Hershey. Cooper Smith. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this here's Barney West. Howdy, sir. Well, I, I ain't seen folks except in Indians for about a week now. I guess. Where are you from? We're scouts from a wagon train a couple hours back. Well, if that don't beat all. You hear that, Herman? They're from a wagon train. <laughs> yeah. You know something? Yeah, I'd like to know something. You waiting around here for more Arapahoes to show up? Arapahoes? Arapahoes. Indians, like the ones that just rode off. Oh, so that's what you call them, huh? What's that in those barrels? Well, now, them two on the other side, and this one has got water in it. Except this one's empty, kind of. And that one has got a little cracked corn left. Yeah, but it's much better for them this way. Chewing the cobs, it keeps them from getting lampers in their mouth and gums. What about those other girls? Oats. Oats. Yeah, yeah. I was afraid I'd run out on them, you know, but I got loaded up pretty good at Fort Carney. Bought them from the Army. Do you have any objections if I took a look? No, of course not, of course not. You fellas like uh, some feed for your little ponies? No, thanks. That's, uh, that's oats. That's salt. I know what it is. Yeah, I, I brung it in lumps instead of blocks, you know. That's much easier to handle that way. Well, that's the first time I've ever seen a chuck wagon for a horse. Mr. Hershey, I owe you an apology. Yeah, what for, Mr. Smith? Well, when I saw those Indians riding away, leaving you unharmed, I kind of figured maybe you were supplying them with whiskeys and rifles. Me, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> no, no, I ain't got neither. <laughs> but I tell you, when I first saw them Indians closing in on Herman and me, I could have used some of that bottled courage. <laughs> hey, never mind closing up the tailgate there. <laughs> yeah, but we don't worry about the engines no more. No. 
Yeah, they're just curious about Herman. It's easy to understand why. I bet he's the biggest horse anybody's ever seen. You know, it's a funny thing, though. I try to tell him his name is Herman, but they keep calling him Wakanda. Wakanda? Well, that's another name the Indians use for, well, something they consider a supernatural force, a kind of a god. You don't see. You suppose that's why all of them want to get some of the hairs off of Herman's leg? Well, sure, they figure if they can wear something that came from a Wakanda, they'll be as strong as he is. Oh, so that's why Herman and me always got the best of the bargain when we traded with him. You've been trading with the Arapahoes? You want just a few of Herman's leg hairs for a few years of corn. How lucky can you get? <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't try to cheat him, you understand. No, that's the way they wanted it. it and how else could I get corn for Herman way out here? That's not quite what Barney meant, Mr. Hershey. Don't you know you're in hostile Indian country? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Smith, the Herman and me ain't quite sure where we are, but we're headed for California. And we sure would like to hook up with that wagon train of yours, wouldn't we, Herman? Well, that'd be up to Chris Hale, our wagon master. I don't see why not. You hear that, Herman? We're going to California with the wagon train after all. <laughs> Ain't he something, Mr. Chris? Certainly is. Charlie. Where did you ever find a horse that big, Mr. Hersey? Well, I had him since he was about three weeks old. He was the only critter that got out of a terrible stable fire. And when I found out that the owner was trapped in there, too, I just uh, brought the cold home with me. Must have bottle fed him, huh? <laughs> oh, I had to. <laughs> Then he got so used to being pampered that he uh, sort of followed me around like a pet dog. Yeah, he still does. <laughs> it was the day he tried to climb into my lap that I called him Herman uh, after a dog I once had. <laughs> it's hard to believe he was ever a little fellow, though. <laughs> well, it sure is hard for me to believe that he could ever grow to be so big. <laughs> well, you know, it was nearly a year before I found out that he's what's called a Belgian. <laughs> Well, uh, Coop tells me you're from Chicago, Mr. Hershey. Yes, I was born and raised there. Did you come this far west all by yourself? No, no. Herman and me has only been uh, alone since we left Scott's Bluff. Oh. Uh, well, uh, to be honest with you, Mr. Hale, Herman and me has been on three different wagon trains already. Three? Yes, yes. The first one uh, left us behind at Fort Kearney, and. The second one dropped us off at uh, North Platte, and then the third one at Scott's Bluff. <laughs> Are we out in Nebraska yet? <laughs> yeah. Well, why did they leave you behind? Well, Mr. Hale, I ain't as young as I used to be, and I don't go so fast as I used to. Them other wagon masters said that if I didn't keep up, why, well, I'd be left behind, so I got left. <laughs> I know I ain't got no right to ask for favors, but if I slow you up too much, just say the word and uh, I'll understand. Well, are you, uh, you mean you got so tired driving that you couldn't keep up with the rest of the wagon? Well, M Mr. Hale, any time he'd like a little relief, I'd, I'd be glad to drive for him. What about your own wagon? Well, I can handle it, Mr. Hale. See, if you put Mr. Hershey's wagon right behind ours, we'd, we'd be handy any time he wanted some help. Hmm. Sounds fine to me. Well, see, that is the most friendly offer that Herman and me has ever got. And we ain't even met yet. <laughs> oh, William Temple, sir. And uh, this is my wife, Martha. I'm very pleased to meet you. Yeah, and that goes the same for Herman and me. <laughs> ain't that so, Herman, huh? <laughs> we don't want to go riding alone anymore, do we? Herman, <laughs> that's right. No, we don't. <laughs> what he says. <laughs> Why don't you show Mr. Hershey where your wagon is, will you? Oh, yes, sir. It's right down here. Oh, thank you. Will you excuse me all, huh? <laughs> come on, come on. Real likable man. Likable or not, he shouldn't be trying to go across the country if he's not physically able. Oh, he'll keep up. Shucks, I bet he's as strong as his horse. <laughs> well, I hope you're right, Charlie. That old man's a fool trying to get across country with a wagon like that and only one horse. Well, ask me, he won't be able to make it to the Continental Divide, much less get across it. You know, Martha, 
You don't look old enough to know how to boil water, but you sure cooked up a good supper. Thank you, Mr. Hershey. <laughs> you two young uns seem like newlyweds to me. Oh, no. We've been married two months and three days. Two months and you, you don't say. <laughs> well, I moved to California with my folks two summers ago, and, well, I got so lonesome for Martha that I had to go back after. The only way I could get her to go back to Monterey with me is to marry her. Oh, William. <laughs> well, I'll say it was worth the trip. Yeah. <laughs> is that where you're going to live, Monterey, uh, in California? Yeah, my, my father opened a carpenter shop there, and I worked for him. Oh, so you're a carpenter, huh? Yes, sir. And he's learned to be a cabinet maker, too. You should see some of the things he's made. William is very talented. Yeah, how about that, Mr. Hershey? <laughs> I just hope there are some people in Monterey who feel the same way about my work that she does. Yeah. Well, I guess I better get back to Herman. Oh, you don't have to leave yet, do you, Mr. Hershey? Well, I don't want to, but I, there's one thing I'd like to ask William before I do go. William, is it true what I heard about California, that, uh, that it's summer there all the time? Most parts of it, I guess. It's sure that way around Monterey, but there's lots of snow in some places. It just depends on where you're planning to settle. Yeah, well, Monterey, there's no doubt about that. Monterey is the best place for Herman and me. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we'd sure be happy to help you get settled if there's anything we could do. Well, thank you, William. That's very kind of you. Tell me, what kind of uh, work did you do back in Chicago, sir? Well, Herman and me used to work for a brewery. We delivered beer to saloons. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Herman is sure given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never visited Chicago, but I've heard a lot about it. Is it windy, as they say? Windy? Why, one day, the wind coming off Lake Michigan was so strong that I seen a hen lay the same egg twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess after that that I'd better get along home. <laughs> you all rested up for tomorrow. <laughs> and I want to thank you for a good supper. Oh, you're more than welcome, Mr. Yeah. Hershey. We enjoyed your company. Yeah, thank you. And as my old pa used to say, if you're lucky enough to get up in the morning, <laughs> Be happy about it. Good night. <laughs> Good night, sir. Do you think you can help Mr. Hershey find a job in Monterey? I mean, some kind that won't be too hard for him. Oh, I think so. But uh, what makes you so sure he wants a job? Maybe he's got some money set away. Oh, I don't think so. In fact, I'm sure he hasn't. Well, what makes you say that? I don't know. Just a feeling I have. Is that all? Just a little case of feminine intuition? William. <laughs> Sitting up for me, huh? <laughs> well, say, we sure met up with some fine folks this time. Yes, we did, and they like us, too. You should have heard what that young fella said about California. He said the sun shines there almost every day of the year. And in, in Monterey, where we're going, they don't have no snow nor ice ever, just like I promised. Ain't that wonderful? All right, you ready for the lullaby? Down in the valley, valley so low, hang your head over, hear the wind blow, hear the wind blow. Sunshine, violets love dew. Angels in heaven know I love you. Know that I love you, that I love you. Angels in heaven.
Mr. Sugar, she getting along? He seems all right. <laughs> Trade all of our horses for one the size of Herman. Especially on a hill like this. Ha! feel ashamed just because you're a little tired. All right, all right. Come on, I'll walk with you now. I'll, I'll walk with you. Yes, the boy. Now, try once more, will you, for me? You know this ain't half as steep as the hill we had to cross when we picked up those kegs of beer at the Blue Moon Saloon. Come on, try it, huh? Come on, come on, give it a try. Come on, that's it. Come on, dear, that's my boy. Come on, I'll get it for you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, don't you worry, none. We'll catch up with them. It's all downhill now. Don't go away without me, huh? when you are. You want to get up now, Herman? Yeah, just fine, Mr. Hawks. Well, uh, how come you're lagging so far behind? Uh, we ain't so far behind. Uh, the others are just ahead there, see? You look there, they're ahead. We've been uh, following right along behind them all the way like uh, we were supposed to do. Well, you uh, started with them. You're supposed to stay with them, not drop behind until you're riding the rear guard. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fact is I... I stopped the way back and got out just to stretch my legs, you know. <laughs> like I told you last night, I, uh, you know, I get pretty tired sometimes. We understand. As soon as we get up to the Newton place, we can all take a little rest. Good horse would say, good groomings worth a bag of oats. Well, hello, Mr. Worcester. Uh, you mind if I give Herbert a little dessert? No, not at all. Get, well, look at that there, Herman. You ain't had carriage since you left Chicago. <laughs> hey, go right ahead now. One bite at a time there. <laughs> well, it sure is a pleasure to meet a man who cares so much about his horse. You know, half the people we carry to California don't have any idea how to treat the animals that's going to get them there. Suppose you're going out there to do a little homesteading and maybe look for gold, huh? No, no, no. I'm too old to start prospecting and uh, or be a pioneer. <laughs> Shucks, I didn't think you were any older than me. Sit down. You got Sit down. kin folks out there, Mr. Hershey? No. Nobody but Herman and me, that's all. Well, the wagon train's the only family I got. Sometimes I wish I had somebody like Herman. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. The only reason I'm making this trip is for Herman's sake. Herman's sake? Yes. He just can't stand them cold Chicago winters no more. So I'm taking him out to California for his health. Has he been sick? No, but Herman is 38 years old. 38 years old? <laughs> I've never met a horse 38 years old before. And last winter he fell down on the ice. Twice he done it. Did you ever see a big horse fall down on the ice? Pitiful sight. 
Every time they tried to get up, they'd slip and fall back again. Well, the last time it happened, I was afraid he'd break his leg. So I promised him right then and there that I'd take him someplace where there wasn't any snow or ice. So if Mr. Hale thinks we're moving too slow and he wants to throw us off the train... Well... He didn't say nothing like that. Well, no, not yet, but he might. Don't you worry, Mr. Hershey. Now that you've told me how it is, I will see that you and Herman have no problem in keeping up. Well, I sure appreciate that, Mr. Worcester, but I don't want you to go to no trouble on my account. Oh, don't you worry. It won't be in trouble. I can handle Mr. Hale. Just leave it to me. <laughs> Ready to roll! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Herman, we'll get to California. Don't you fret. Well, I better run. See you later. <laughs> All right, Herman. Ready to roll. Come on. Come on. Hey, Wes. Anything wrong, Mr. Biggers? That's what I'd like to know. Why are we moving so slow? I don't know. This rate I'll get into the gold country by Christmas. I'll ride ahead and see what I can find out for you. Why don't you just climb in the back and get yourself a good snooze? <clears throat> you were driving and putting you to sleep in the first place. What's the matter with you? You know better than to poke along like this. Safety first, I always say. I don't believe in driving any faster than safe. Besides, we ain't trying to win no race, are we? Well, I'd like to log a few more miles before we camp for the evening. There ain't no use pushing the team and tying them out. There ain't going to no fire, either. Mr. Biggers is complaining about the train moving so slow. No, I'm complaining about the same thing, Barney. That Biggers lives up to his name, don't he? A bigger mouth I've never seen. Always complaining about something. Give me those lines. Get up! A man don't have any respect for his animals, don't have any respect for anybody else he's got into you, Charlie. Hello, old man hurt. Falling behind again. As slow as I've been going... Oh, so that's it, huh? Didn't young Temple help with the driving like he promised? Well, he offered to, but the old man wouldn't let him. Wouldn't have done any good anyway. Why not? Are you taking a good look at that horse of his? He has to be 35 years old if he's a day. He's 38. Oh. So that was the reason the other wagon masters let him go. Well, because of the horse, not the man. Right on up ahead and tell Coop we're going to camp earlier than we planned. All right. We signed on back at St. Joe. You agreed to take everybody to Sacramento by the shortest possible route and in the fastest possible time. That's right. Well, then how long are you going to let this newcomer, Hershey, and his old horse slow this wagon train down to a crawl? Well, I was planning on having a talk with him as soon as I had my supper. Well, I'm afraid talking won't put muscle back into that worn-out hay burner. Now, the sooner you get rid of him, the sooner we'll make better time. Meanest weasel-hearted polecat. Get rid of me, says. Poor old man. Coop, how far out of our way you figure this torrent? About 25 miles, maybe. Why? You're planning on dropping Hershey and Herman off a point, ain't you? I'm not planning on anything. I can't let that horse hold us back four or five miles every day. Losing that much time and get this whole train snowbound in the mountains. I'm going to have a talk with him. And I'm coming with you. Be right back. Roses love sunshine, violets love dew. Angels in heaven know I love you. Know that I love you, that I love you. Angels in heaven know I love you. Good evening, Mr. Hale and Mr. Worcester. Hey, I want to interrupt you here. 
Oh, you ain't interrupting nothing. And Herman, he could sleep through anything. <laughs> <laughs> I brought a carrot for Herman's dessert, but it'll keep till morning. Yeah. Oh, well, Dad, thank you very much. Uh, Herman loves carrots any time. <laughs> Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, Mr. Hershey, I hope that you realize what I'm going to say isn't meant to. Oh, now, don't feel so bad about it, Mr. Hale. It ain't your fault if Herman and me are so slow. And we won't have no hard feelings if you have to leave us behind. Well, I never leave anybody behind, not in a country like this. But as you know, Mr. Hershey, I'm responsible for a lot of people on this train. That's right. And Mr. Hershey here is one of them. Don't forget that. Mr. Hershey, have you ever thought of just turning Herman loose? He could live off this country. Turning Herman loose? You asking me to leave him behind? Oh, Mr. Chris, don't leave nobody behind. We just heard him say that, didn't we? I'm trying to find the solution to a problem. This is fine grass country. He'd never go hungry, and you could go on to California with us. You couldn't even suggest a thing like that if you know how the two of them felt about each other. I know how they feel. Now, Mr. Hershey, you must realize that Herman is physically incapable of ever getting to California. He's old, he's tired, he's, uh, well, he'd he just never make it, that's all. I don't believe that, Mr. Hale. If I did, I wouldn't have started him on this trip in the first place. It may take us a little longer than some folks, but we'll get to California, Herman and me, one way or another. Now, make up your mind about that. You have gotta do what you gotta do, and I gotta do what I gotta do. But that ain't no reason why we can't part friends. <laughs> well, what I've got to do is to convince you, Mr. Hershey, that a man your age has absolutely no possibility of getting across this country by himself, even if Herman pulled your wagon every inch of the way. <clears throat> now, here's what I'm prepared to do. We have a few extra horses. Now, I'll lend you a team to pull your wagon. And then maybe if Herman just follows along behind... By golly, that'll do it, Mr. Chris, that'll do it. Well, I certainly appreciate that, Mr. Hale. But there's only one thing. I ain't drove a team in I don't know how long, and I don't know whether I'll be able to handle them or not. Well, maybe William Temple can, until you feel up to it. Well, uh, William did offer to drive Herman for me. Well, uh, Charlie will bring you a team by in the morning. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hale. All thank right. you. <laughs> I knew there was no problem. Mr. Chris and me couldn't solve once we put our heads together. Uh-oh. <laughs> See you in the morning. Bye. All right, get ready to move. Load them up. I right, load them up. Wagon drove. Wagon drove. You better get aboard, Martha. Will you? I'll go tie on Herman. <laughs> Let's move out. Oh, Herman, now, come on, get up. <laughs> uh, we got to get going. What's the matter with him, Mr. Hershey? It ain't gonna work, William. What ain't gonna work? Well, he's been pulling that wagon all his life, and seeing them other horses hitched to it is breaking his heart. Breaking his heart? Well, his feelings been hurt. I should have known better. You better get that other team on hitch and take them back to Mr. Hale. What, what, what's the matter, Herman, huh? Now, you ain't sick, are you? No, no, you ain't sick, of course you ain't. Let me see that. No, no, you're fine. Here, now, don't worry, I got that other team unhitched there. Now you're gonna get right back in the wagon. That's right. Yeah, yes, son. <laughs> He deserves to be left behind. It's his feelings hurt. Why are you driving so fast? Well, you told me to. Oh, William, Mr. Hershey's falling behind again. Who, sir? Who? Why are we stopping? Well, do you think it'd be a good idea if I went back there and rode with him for us today, or maybe drove for him? I'm sure he'd like that. Well. An old man and an old horse and an old wagon are all kind of a little bit the same. They need lots of encouragement to keep going. Keep
keep up with the train, you hear? I love you. Anything wrong, William? No, sir. I just thought maybe to enjoy a little company and hear a little more about California. Well, I sure would like to. You yeah, climb on. Hey, you know, I, I'd especially like to hear about Monterey. Uh, shall we get up now, Herman? <laughs> You know something I want to do as soon as we get to Monterey? I want to pick me an orange right off the tree. Well, I never did that. Could I think about it? I don't know if there are any orange trees in Monterey. No oranges? Well, there's some pears. And I know of a plum orchard. Oranges, well, well, it's, uh, Mostly fishing around there, you know, especially for whales. Whales? You don't say. Hmm? You have a rifle, Mr. Hershey? What for? Don't worry about them, William. Them engines never bother us. They don't. What do you think you're doing? Uh, we was letting Herman get a rest. Well, you might have a permanent rest if you don't get back to the wagon train. Now, let's get him hitched up and get out of here. Why, them engines never hurt Herman and me. You know, you and your horse might be a con to those Rapahoes, but Mr. Temple isn't. <laughs> Mr. Hershey! Mr. Hershey! Mr. Hershey! <laughs> Mr. Hershey, how do you make Herman move? Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, Herman, come on, we go now. How do you make Herman move? <laughs> we gotta get going, Herman, come on. How much longer is this gonna go on? They're holding everybody up because of an old fool and his dying horse. Now listen, beggars. You said we would be in Sacramento by the 13th of September. Now, if I'm not there by then, I lose a chance to buy into a gold mine. I never gave you or anybody else an exact arrival time in Sacramento. If you think I'm going to be cheated out of a fortune by a horse that ought to be shot and put out of his misery, you've got another thing coming. Why, that no good polecat. Did you hear what he said, Miss Chris? Uh, sometimes it's the most humane thing to do. To shoot Herman? Charlie's an old, old horse. All right, so he's old. So am I. I suppose when I get too old to cook for you and the rest of them, you'll take me out and shoot me. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. Human thing to do, that's what you said. I'll tell you another thing, Mr. Chris. You're going to have to shoot me before you shoot Herman. I'm not going to shoot Herman. You said you was. I did not. But I can't let him go on making us lose this much time every day. What are you staring at? Nothing. Got any coffee, Charlie? Get it yourself! <laughs> you dropping Hershey? You think I like doing it? What's that supposed to mean? Well, nothing. You're the wagon master, aren't you? I mean, you give the orders. You're getting as bad as Worcester. Well, we were worried about you. You had a right to be, Charlie. Fair sized bunch of Arapahoes last night. Oh, nice. Mr. Wooster and I are just about ready to ride out after you two. Yeah, well, William was sure a big help to me today. Yeah, I gave him a lecture on Monterey. Yeah, <laughs> right in here. Hey, hey, thank you. Right. 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 Oh. Yeah. oh, I tell you, I don't know which is the tiredest, Herman's feet or my seat. <laughs> 
Well, you've done pretty good today, Herman, and I'm proud of you. Would you put it up there for me? Thank you. As soon as you finish up, why don't you go get washed up? Mr. Wooster's invited all of us for supper tonight. No, oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Wooster. Well, you folks had a long day. The least I can do is save you from cooking. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Wooster, for my part. And I guess you're anxious for your supper, too, ain't you, Herman? Gosh, I forgot his carrots. I'll run and get them. No, no, never mind. We've got four or five left, yes. And I'll give him one for dessert after I feed him his oats. Hmm? You mind if I put the nose back on? No, sure, if you want. Do you know where they are? Yeah. Back in the last Mr. Barrel. Hershey, I'm sorry, but I simply can't allow any more of these delays. Now, we talked about this before. Yes, I remember. So the first thing in the morning, Coop's going to start guiding you to Torrington. Torrington? Where is that? That's a little fur trading settlement just the other side of the Wyoming border. But if you do that, Mr. Hershey and Herman will never get to California. Well, if I don't do it, Mrs. Temple, this whole wagon train may not get to California. Uh, Mr. Hale. Please let me finish. Now, I want you to know, Mr. Hershey, that this has been a very difficult decision to make. I like you. We all like you. And Herman there. <coughs> but I simply can't allow him to go on holding up this wagon train day after day. Uh, Mr. Hershey. Mr. and Mrs. Temple. I'm still cooking supper for you tonight. But it's the last meal I'm cooking on this wagon train. <laughs> Does that mean he's quitting? Kind of sounded that way, didn't it? Uh, Mr. Hale, I got an idea today about how we could keep Herman from slowing us down, and, uh, well, I, I'm not sure it'd work, but it might. What might? Uh, I, I, I can't explain it to you, but I, I could draw you a picture if I had a piece of paper and a pencil. Come on. Well, what do you think, boy? I think it's worth a try, Chris. Just might work. How long will it take you, will you? I think I can do it in a day, sir. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Pass the word this train is staying right here until day after tomorrow. Mr. Hershey and Herman are going to have a nice rest before we pull out again. You mean you're not sending to Torrington? It may not be necessary now, Charlie. That's the best news I ever heard. Uh, I think it's pretty good news myself. I think it calls for a real celebration. How about a big hoedown after supper? It's a good idea. I've always said you're the best wagon master in the business. Well, thank you, Charlie. I hope our next cook thinks as highly of me. Next cook? Whatever gave you the idea I was quitting?
<laughs> well, I ain't played so much and so hard since the last time I met those fellas in the Blue Moon Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were just wonderful on the guitar, Mr. Hershey. Uh, well, I think it was Mr. Worcester's cider that made me perform so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tied to the wagon here. He, he's gone. Well, maybe, maybe he just got loose. No, no, Herman wouldn't go no place without me. He, he ain't never done that. I gotta go look for him. Now you can't, Mr. Hershey. Not tonight. No, no, I've just got it, will you? Go tell Mr. Hale what's happening. No, Mr. Hershey, I, I can't let you go out there all by yourself. You think the engines got him? I don't know. Yeah, but the engines always liked Herman and me. Yeah, well, Mr. Hershey, now. Please, when Mr. Hale gets here, he'll, he'll know what to do. <laughs> I... Poor Herman, he... He just can't go to sleep without my singing to him. I feel terrible. Arapahoes has told Herman he's perfectly safe. Is that right, Mr. Creel? That's right, Charlie. You see, the Indians won't hurt anything they think is Wakanda. <laughs> They'll possibly treat him better than you do. <laughs> what I mean is that, uh, you know, they won't work him and they'll take good care of him. <laughs> well, Biggers isn't in his wagon. Somebody said they saw him at the hoedown, but nobody's seen him since. It'll be light pretty soon. You can start tracking him. Oh, Chris. Mr. Hershey, we're, we're going to do all we can to find Herman for you. Just as soon as it's light enough, Coop and Barney are going to track him down. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Take me to where them engines are. Maybe I could talk them into giving Herman back to me. I'm sorry, Mr. Hershey. We can't let you do that. Well, there's no reason for waiting over now. Coop, Barney, pass the word to hitch up and get ready to roll. Mr. Hershey, I'm going to give Bigger's team to you. You can have his wagon, too. I think it's only proper after what he did to you. You'll be a lot more comfortable in the Bigger's wagon. <laughs> uh. Don't there ain't no use in going to California now. Put up a barricade! There they are, Chris. Looks like we lost our insurance when we lost Herman. Mr. Hershey, William, bring Mr. Hershey up here. Hershey? Herman. This Herman. Herman? Herman?
Well, looks like we can unhitch and relax. William, let me know if you need any help to build that contraption. Well, Herman, am I glad to see you. <laughs> oh, yes, well, I've been so worried about you, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, are you all right, Herman, huh? <laughs> you all right? Oh, look, look what they did. Well, they gave you some corn, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I was wondering what happened to you. It don't look like them engines took any of your leg feathers, either. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to bed you down, and I'm going to sing you a lullaby. And then I'm going to let you snooze all day, yeah. No, no, I'm going to do that, yeah. You're going to snooze all day, and you must have been up all night. I know I've been. <laughs> Let's go, huh? Come on, come on, Herman. <laughs> Take it easy now, down the hill, come on. Well, come on, Herman, there ain't nothing to be scared of. Maybe a carrot would help, Mr. Hershey. Yeah, it's a good idea, hand me one. Come on now, Herman, now you trust me, don't you? Here you are, Herman. Now, come on, now. Come on. You like this once you find out what it is. Instead of walking, you'll be riding all the way to California. <laughs> That's it. Come on, now. <laughs> come on, now. There's... <laughs> to get up now, Mr. Hale? Yes, sir, Mr. Hershey. <laughs> hey, any of you fellas know that little girl out there? What little girl? She was there a minute ago, standing right by that wagon. Little girl with a shawl on. A shawl? In the middle of the desert in August? You must be losing your mind, Charlie. Sure, honey. Yes, indeed. Anything. What's wrong? It's so cold. 
and it hasn't stopped snowing in a week. Please help us. Cold and snow? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. What can I do to help? Charlie, what are you doing? Sleepwalking? I was talking to that little girl right there. What little girl? Well, she was there a minute ago, but you barged in and scared her away. Oh, not me. I don't scare girls. Not so they run away, at least. Barney, come here. Hey, that's funny. You feel it, too? Yeah. Over there, it's warm because the night's warm, but here it's freezing cold. Barney? What's your smell like right here? Smell? It smells like the air did last year when we ran into that October blizzard, remember? Yeah, snow. Like Coop said, in the middle of the desert in the middle of August. What's causing this, Charlie? I don't know. I just don't know. Train, Charlie. A lot of folks heard her crying. They, they're worrying about it. They seem to think somebody's treating their little daughter awful bad. What do you think? Well, just before you got here, on your way back from sparking or whatever you were doing, she asked me for help. Please help us, she said. I wonder who she means by us. What kind of help? She didn't say. She was about to, and you barged in. All of that, Charlie. Whoa. Suppose I scout around and see what I can find, Charlie. Like what? Well, like maybe a little girl who looks sad, maybe her eyes are red from crying. Yeah, you might ask her why it was so cold there where she was standing. Well, there, there could have been a cave there or something funneling out air from underground, maybe. You might ask her why it smelled of snow. It would be interesting to find an underground cave where it snowed, you know. Well, maybe she came down off those mountains. The mountains are over 100 miles away. How would she get here? Charlie, you think maybe somebody's playing a joke on us? Well, if they are, I don't think it's funny. Not one bit. You can do your snooping around, but I doubt if you find out anything. But don't forget, don't say anything about last night to anybody. All right, but why? Because I don't want to be laughed at, that's why. Now, you see this notch? Fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. <laughs> five, yes. You know, that's when I was riding with Cole Younger. That's before both he and I joined up with the James boy. You see, we just stood up this train and this conductor. Oh, he got frothy. And he comes smoking at me with a derringer. So, I had to put a window right through his skull. <laughs> clean through it. See the trick on the other side. Just clear and plain and set and sun. You see, that was just part of the profession I was pursuing at the time. <laughs> now, you take a bank president, you know, when he's got a foreclose on a poor old widow woman with maybe six children. His blood. It don't get all frosted or all biled up. No. <laughs> he just goes about his business like that's all I was doing with that conductor. <laughs> just um, foreclosing on him. Now, come on, you kids better go eat now because your mother won't let me talk to you again. You ask me, the only shooting Boone Gill has ever done was with his big mouth. Well, he amuses the kids. Funny thing about some liars, Charlie, they believe their lies. Time comes when they don't know whether it really happened or not. 
You might say that to tell a tall tale makes the teller grow taller. A fellow like you should never tell the truth. Like, for instance, that last night I was freezing and there was smell of fresh snow all around? You're saying that happened? Suppose I was. Pretty good. You probably grew an inch just then. Oh, I meant to tell you, they found a little girl who was doing all that crying. Little Jenny Lawson, that wagon down at the end of the line. You remember her. I... I don't recall. Had a bad earache. Now that it's cleared up, we can get some sleep. You must have seen her, that saucy little redhead with a tipped up nose. Well, no wonder she has an earache with that week long blizzard we've been having around here. That ought to be enough, Charlie. You don't want to grow as tall as Bill in one day, do you? <laughs> saying that. You've been saying it all this last week. It stands to reason it had to be her. She didn't have red hair and she didn't have a turned up nose. Yeah, but nobody's heard any crying since Jenny got well. We never heard Jenny crying. The Lawson wagon is almost the end of the train, more than a half a mile away. The crying we heard sounded like it was right at our elbow. Oh, on a still night sound will travel. You know that. I know that that cold we felt and that smell of snow. I've been thinking it over, Charlie. We just imagined all that. It was all in our minds. Anyway, how come we haven't heard any crying on the train all this week? I don't know. Oh, Charlie. Wheel came off the Johnson wagon. Bill's helping him put it on. What'd have to happen in this turn is heat? Heat? You're just imagining things, Miss Chris, all your head. You Chris Hale, the wagon master? Yeah. We're from the McWhorter train. Oregon bond. Traveling about 50 miles north of you. Say, uh, you lost a little girl off your train? Lost a little girl? Why, no. No one's reported a missing child. So far, this has been the smoothest trip we've ever had. What's this all about? Well, it's 50 miles of hard, hot riding for nothing, I reckon. Not that we ain't glad that you folks are OK. It all started about, uh, about a week ago, last Tuesday night, wasn't it, Sandy? Mm, yeah, it is Tuesday, about midnight. What started? Someone crying. Pitifulest sound you ever heard in your life. A little girl. We caught a glimpse of her one night out beyond our circle. Big eyes and pretty, but kind of thin. Traces of snow in her hair, which just didn't make no sense at all. As we was crossing the Salt Lake Flats and the temperature was just busting out of the thermometer. McWhorter went around to every wagon to see if it was one of our kids, and it wasn't. So then he thought that maybe since she kept begging for help... That... What do you mean, begging for help? She just kept crying, please help us. Then, all of a sudden, it stopped last night. Just like she gave up on us. McWhorter thought that uh, maybe she came from this train. And you folks was maybe in some sort of trouble. And that's how come we're here. All right, Chris, start him up again. Go ahead, Charlie. Yes, sir. Bye. No. Well, I'm sorry you fellas had to go to all this trouble. Well, that's all right. The quarter will be glad to know you folks are all right. We'll see you. The desert usually cools off at night, but not this trip. At least that little lost and girl get rid of her earache. Maybe we'll get some sleep for a change. You suppose she's the one that McWhorter train heard crying? I don't know. Who's their cook? Could have been somebody with a bellyache. I think I'm going to get one now that I've eaten. Well, it's too hot to sleep. I think I'll take a walk. You know, Coop, old Charlie's getting kind of fretful lately. For springtime, I think that maybe he's falling in love. Well, it could be, Bill. You know, spring comes a little later each year, his time of life. <laughs>
little girl. Did you see her? What are you doing here? Getting to be a night bird, ain't you? Well, did you? No. Well, maybe your folks found her and took her back home. Back home where? Well, it stands to reason she must live hereabouts. Maybe your father has a mining claim and they have a shack around here. Maybe she ran away. You're too full of maybes. That's the trouble with you. Why don't you go back to camp? <laughs> That hot sky? Do you feel the cold that's come up? Yeah. She's here. She's here. Little girl? Little girl? Where are your friends, little girl? me of being a nervous type, but I feel raw all over. She never quit crying all night, Chris. You and Bill better check every wagon today. We may have a family in trouble here. What kind of trouble? I don't know. Maybe they only had enough money to buy their wagon, pay the train fee, not enough for food. Maybe they're too proud to ask their neighbors or to come to me. Chris, you think anybody that proud would send a little girl out to beg for them? Yeah, and how'd she get to the McWeather wagon? We don't know. It was the same girl. And quit badgering me. If I knew all the answers, I wouldn't be asking you to get them. Now, just do as you're told. Last night, when I went... Well, I found something. Barney joined up with me. Just because every time I open my mouth on this train, everybody heckles me. So I'm not going to say what it was I found. You tell them, Barney. Well, it was a handful of snow. And there wasn't a cloud in the sky, and you know how hot it was last night. Well, maybe it was a chunk of ice blew off a mountain, caught in an updraft or something. That happens. What's that got to do with a crying little girl? I don't know. I've got another idea, Charlie. Yeah? You think maybe that girl's, you know, kind of touched? Sort of loco? Well, if she is, so are you and me. We both saw the snow and felt the cold. And there ain't no snow in the mountains this time of year. Go ahead and start the fire. I'll see what I can find for supper. Mister? Are you going up in the mountains to help us? We're going over the mountains? Sure. Pretty quick now, dear. You're a very nice man. I like you. What's your name? Well, I thought everybody knew that. Charlie. Uh, Charlie Wooster. What's yours? Father Mercy Rossiter. Mr. McCutcheon said my name was bigger than I am, but he was only funning. I wish he'd come back. He's been gone an awful long time. Him and Mr. Stanton. McCutcheon and Stanton? Well, it's a pretty big train. Where did they go, dear? Over the other mountains to get help for us. What kind of help, dear? I told you. It's so cold, and we haven't got anything to eat. Mommy gave me all that was left of her food, and she's sick. Nothing to eat. That's what Mr. Chris said was the trouble. Why didn't you come to me sooner, dear? 
instead of crying and getting everybody all upset. <laughs> I'll take care of that in just a minute. Some ham and some bacon. And you like jam? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a silly question to ask a little girl now, ain't it? <laughs> now, we'll take all this food, and we'll go over to your wagon, and we'll feed everybody. <laughs> Give me your hand. Chris right away. Oh, no, wait. It wouldn't do any good. He would just say I was an old man and my mind was cracking up, and you're a young boy telling tall tales. Just wait. She'll be back. She still needs help. Cutchin, Stanton, Rossiter. Not on this train. I didn't ask you that. I asked if you'd heard any of those names before. McCutcheon, Stanton, Rossiter, they're fairly common names. Yes, I've probably heard them before. I may have even known somebody by one of those names. Why? Where'd you hear of? Or did you just pluck him out of the air? Well, so to speak. Well, I knew a Jeremy Stanton back in Missouri before the war. He was a tin horn gambler. Wasn't too good a fella. Instead of McCutcheons, I uh, recall two or three of them. But their rosters, I never heard of them. Who are these people? I don't know. Well, then why are you asking me? Thought you might know. Sure, I knew all three of them. They're the same guys. Randy Stanton got himself gunned down in Abilene. Sam McCutcheon, well, he was a grandpappy of the gal I used to run around with. Well, let's see, he was 95 years old about six years ago. So I reckon he's going on to his reward. And this Rossiter you're asking about, his first name was James, and he died of the plague in New Orleans. Don't you know anybody that's alive? Well, sure, Charlie, I know you. Well, wait a minute. Sorry, Charlie, I take it back. I don't know a living soul. <laughs> Just curl up another conductor? <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? Make it a postmaster this time, or maybe a U.S. Marshal? Yeah, that, let's see now, U.S. Marshal. Oh, there I was, yamping this here bank in Wichita. Had everything under control, all the tellers lined up, all the customers. <laughs> they were shaking like jelly in a hurricane. Yes, sir, they wanted me to take that golden git. When a bullet come whizzing past my left ear from behind, I wheels around. Yep, and Yes, and there he was. Tin star glinting in the sunlight. Peacemaker in one hand, equalizer in the other. Nothing between his teeth, huh? Practically unarmed, I guess. Well, you think they'd believe me if I told him he was carrying an Arkansas toothpick twixt his lips? No. Kids get suspicious you go too far and they start to hooting. No, 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 no. All he had was his hardware. Why do you bother making up all that hogwash? Oh, well, Charlie, I, I keep telling them about these six notches so many times that when I stop to spit, they go right on with the story by themselves. <laughs> what harm is there anyway? I always end up with a moral. What moral? Well, they take one look at me. I mean, what I am now. Well, that's moral enough. <laughs> all day long, I've been asking all over the train about some names I heard. Of course, if I'd have asked you, you said, sure, I knew them real well. They rode with me and Cole Younger before we joined up with Robin Hood. Alabama. Robin Hood for my time. Uh, what was those names? McCutcheon, Stanton, and Rossiter. Big Bill, Little Charlie, widow woman by the name of Rossiter. Uh, if those the same folks you mean. What are you talking about? Well, Little Charlie Stanton and Big Bill McCutcheon and the widow woman, Rossiter, I can't recall her Christian name. Well, Bill and Charlie, they were the first ones to go and get help. Uh, that was up there in the Donna Pass, yes, in 18 and 46. Uh, October, I think it was, yeah. Hmm? Are you claiming you was one of the Donner Pass party? Sure as shooting. Sure as shooting what? The marshal or the conductor? I suppose you died up there in the cold and snow. Is that what you're going to tell me next? I survived. Oh, I got scared when that white stuff wouldn't stop coming down. So when Big Bill McCutcheon and little Charlie Stanton went west to Fort Sutter to get food, I went back east to Jim Bridges' camp to get help. But he was honeymooning one of them squaws he had just married and he wasn't about to budge. So I stayed there, where it was safe. Well, you wasn't a hero that time, was you? Charlie, 
I ain't never in my life been much of a hero. Uh, the widow Rossiter, was she alone? No, she had a kid, a little girl. Now, let's see, what was her name? Oh, yes, she was named after a bird. A uh, Robin, yes, that's it, Robin. Mercy Rossiter. That's right, how do you know? Oh, I must have read it someplace. What happened to Robin and her mama? Oh, they died. Uh, the widow woman first, starvation most likely. And then a family by the name of Glover took the little Robin girl in. She went right on grieving for her mama. And a few days later, we found little Robin dead. Tears in her eyes. She died crying. Died of a broken heart, someone said. She's still crying. And her heart is still broken. You could have made up the whole story, Charlie. You know what a February is. No. Barney, this time, my bone wasn't flying. Fits in with everything she told me. Well, I've heard mention of that Donner Pass tragedy, but nobody ever said just what happened. Well, a party set out from Independence in Missouri for California. Wagons like ours. A lot of bad luck delayed them. By the time they got to the high country, they ran into blizzards, one after the other. There was over 80 of them to start with. The story goes that there was only three or four survivors. And she wasn't one of them. Boone was there when they buried her. So you see, she's been wandering from one place to another for over 20 years, trying to find help. Help that's not needed anymore. Why? Why isn't she with her mother and her friends? Well, somewhere on the way to wherever little girls go when they die, somewhere on the way there, she got lost. That's all I know. Well, here comes Mr. Chris. You ought to tell him the whole story, Charlie. You go ahead and tell him yourself. You want to get laughed at, not me. Chris, you know how many little girls we're carrying on this trip? If we count, there's nearly 40 of them. Yeah, only none of them cried last night. In fact, according to their mothers, some of them never cried in their life. I hope they go on not crying tonight. I'm bushed. Well, it all boils down if there wasn't any crying. Probably some educated animal kept saying, please help us. Well, maybe it was a spirit. Spirit? Only experience I've ever had with spirits is the morning after when you wake up with two heads. You know what I mean, Chris? Yeah, I think I do. You better get your chores done. It's almost supper time. Right. Say, Bill, you know, I've heard tell that uh, spirits only come back and haunt the people that murdered them. Yeah? Say, Charlie, you haven't been giving out any samples of your cooking, have you? You know something Jim told me, Charlie? Yes, sir. Well, what is it? Well, I got to try to work things out for myself first before you put me in an asylum. Is it anything to do with the crying we've heard? Well, if you get ready to talk, let me know. You could have told him, Charlie. He wouldn't have laughed at you. Maybe not. What good would it have done? All he can do is order her to stay away from the train. She'll be back. And after I've told her, she'll go away, and there won't be anything to tell anybody. Well, after you've told her what? Well, that she's, she's dead. to get out of that desert up with this cool air. Of course, in a few days, we'll be complaining about the cold instead of the heat. <laughs> Nothing last night either, huh? No. It's 12 days. Think maybe she found out by herself? I mean, what you were going to tell her? I hope so. You know, we were beginning to get real friendly. I was a nice man, she said. <laughs> I hope she gets back where she belongs. <laughs> Late 
for supper tonight, aren't you, Charlie? Well, you stop this wind from blowing out my fire, maybe this stew meat will cook. You don't want to eat it raw, do you? Well, it try to spoil us, too, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sounds good to hear a kid laugh again. After all that crying we had, I hope we're through with that for good. You think we are? How should I know? Well, a couple of weeks ago, you said you'd try to work things out by yourself. Looks like you have. I'll holler when you're ready. soup out of buffalo robe when we had nothing to eat. But nobody ever tried to cook their hat. Stewed Stutson. One of my specialties. Delicious, too. I thought you'd gone. Where have you been? Up there. Mr. Stanton came back, and he brought things to eat. And a whole deer he killed. And blankets and things. We ate some last night. And it stopped snowing. And Mommy's feeling better. And Mr. Donner built us a house out of sod. And... Is my tongue running away with me? Look. Is it? It seems to me it's exactly where it should be. Mommy says sometimes it does. That means I talk too much, doesn't it? I don't agree with her. Anyway, I like to hear you talk, so go right ahead. Well, anyway, Mr. Stanton says... His first name is Charlie, too. Can I call you Charlie? Well, you better. Old friends like us. Or I'll call you Miss Rossiter. I won't be a real Miss... Till... Till... Till I'm about 13. That's about the time you'd be missing. You say funny things. I guess I love you, Charlie. Do you love me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, anyway... Mr. Stanton says help is coming, and we'll be able to get over the top of the pass if it doesn't snow anymore. Robin, dear, do you understand about time? Mr. Donner has a gold watch, and he lets me listen to a tick, and asks me what the time is, and I can always tell him. And I can read. My mommy taught me. And I can count up to nearly 300. Can you? Well, just about 300. Robin, I don't mean time like, like a watch. I mean like a, a calendar. Like a, do you know what year this is? Uh-huh. 1846, and the month is November. Robin, right now it is September, and the year is 1869. That's silly. When it gets to be 1869, I'll be 47, 48, 49. Robin, dear, you'd have been 29 had you lived. When I'm old like that, I'll be married and have eight children, four boys and four girls, or maybe all girls. Boys get so dirty, and we'll all be living in California where the sun never stops shining, and everything's made of gold. Robin, Robin here, do you know what being dead is? It's when God takes you to heaven. Yes, and heaven must be just beautiful. And our dear Lord takes all of his children into his comforting arms. So that's why, when we pass on, we should go to him, instead of staying here, where, where everything is all mixed up, and kind of sad, too. Robin. You don't belong here. You belong with you. I better go back to my mommy now. Please, Robin, wait. I don't like you when you talk like that. I guess I won't see you anymore. Robin, please. I guess I better say goodbye. Heard it all, Charlie. She's dead. She died long before you were born, Barney. I tried to tell her, but I couldn't. How do I convince her? How? I won't be able to now. She said goodbye. I've got to. I can't let that poor little girl go wandering around, maybe forever. I can't. Wait a minute. She 
she was happy. Maybe she doesn't know yet what happened afterwards. Afterwards? Yeah, afterwards. Never mind. Call the boys to eat. I gotta see somebody. <laughs> It's not even half done. Bill, Chris, come on, supper's ready. When did Mrs. Rossiter die? Was it before Charlie Stanton came back or after? You're still hopping on that. <laughs> well, he got back, uh, let's see, it was early November. She took sick about a month later. Oh, she looked half starved, if you ask me. Little did brought back it all run out. Uh, she died in about a couple of days. That's what I thought, after Stanton got back. When did little Robin die? Oh, that's a day I ain't likely to forget. A uh, night, I should say. It was Christmas Eve, 1846. As if she was wanted up there for a Christmas gift. Well, we buried her close to her mother, evening of the next day. There was nothing merry about that Christmas, no sir. Where? I mean, where was her grave? Oh, it was in a cemetery we had, uh, right next to where the camp was. We buried her there. One of the fellas had found a slab of pine wood, and on it he'd burned her name, how old she was, with a hot poker. And he added, may the Lord give her comfort. That was her gravestone. The poor little tag. She never did get that comfort. She got lost before she could find it. <laughs> Chris says we'll be going through it in a few days. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me that I don't already know, like my name is Charles B. Wooster, I have a beard, and I work for Chris Hale? All right, all right. I know you've been through it plenty of times. Uh, it was just leading up to, you know. She hasn't been back, has she? Well, then, that's that. She said goodbye, and she meant it. So she's gone. You don't have to worry about her anymore. I don't know what I would do without your advice. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me out of your mighty wisdom? Yeah, I heard there's a lake on the top of that mountain up there. Why don't you go soak your head in it? It'll do you some good. You can't talk to me like that, Barney. Look, I'm about the only one around here that does talk to you. You've been growling at Bill and Coop. You've even been short with Mr. Chris. All on account of some little kid that hasn't got sense enough to know she's dead. You better snap out of it before the whole wagon train hates you. Charlie? I'm not Charlie. Oh, hi, Mr. Chris. Well, he cut the meat and put it in the water, and he said it was all mine. From the way it smells, I think it will be. Oh, yeah, and he said to add bay leaves. What are bay leaves? How come he promoted you from chief dish and bottle washer to cook? Well, he's got some things on his mind he wanted to think them out by himself. He says he can't think when we're around. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chris. You notice how cranky he's been lately, Mr. Chris? Yeah. What is it on his mind? Why? Well, sort of promised not to tell. I thought it was little Jenny Lawson crying because of her earache. When that was over, I figured that'd be the end of it. She was disturbing the McWhirter train about that time. And she came back here. Nobody's seen a sign of her since. Have they? She's driving him right out of his senses, Mr. Chris. She said goodbye to him, but he seems to think she's going to come back. He wants her to come back. Then she has been back here since. Yeah, twice. I saw her both times. Well, why does he want her back? 
Well, so he can convince her she's dead. She doesn't believe that she is. She was one of the Donner Party. I saw her, Mr. Chris. I could see through her. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, I never saw one. But I've never seen Niagara Falls, either. I'd be stupid to deny their existence because of that. You see where he went? Yeah, he went off that way. Oh, hello, Mr. Chris. Charlie? Yeah? I, uh... Sort of uh, browbeat Barney into telling me everything. Well, I've coped with Indians, lightning, prairie fires, blizzards, a cyclone that struck us in Kansas. But I've never had any experience with ghosts. Then you don't think there are any? I didn't say that. But a little girl ghost who doesn't know she's dead is rather incredible. Maybe because I'm old, you think my wits are wandering. Barney's young. I got the story from him. All right, supposing it did happen. Why are you so concerned, Charlie? Well, suppose you met someone that couldn't find the way home. You'd show him the way, wouldn't you? Home? Well, how can a dead person have a home? That home we all go to sooner or later. Barney said the last time you saw her, she said goodbye. She's not coming back. Well, she didn't know then that her mother was going to die. I know I sound daffy. Her mother's been dead a long, long time. But she didn't know that that night. Sooner or later, she's going to find it out. Maybe now. And she'll be back here crying her poor little heart out. And that's when I have to be able to send her, well, home. I know I sound daffy. You're going to lock me up. Would that convince you this whole thing is just an illusion? No. Well, there'd be no point to it, then. You haven't threatened to become violent yet. Mr. Chris, can I borrow a horse from you to... I want to go someplace. Up there. The Donner Pass? Well, we'll be there Saturday. Well, I got to be there before that and be ready just in case. You've been through there a dozen times in as many years. If you want evidence of something that happened a quarter of a century ago, you won't find it. There's nothing left. Yes, there is, and I'll find it, and that'll be the clincher. Oh, Mr. Chris, have the boys do their own cooking. Thank you. You know, Barney, Charlie isn't going to mind after he finds out how good you've been doing. Well, he might be jealous for a day or two, but he'll come around. That's some of the best stew we've ever eaten. Oh, look, I'm not a cook. I'm a scout. Well, I almost am, aren't I? I mean, I've been out several times with you, and I did all right, didn't I? Well, I don't know, Barney. What about that time you fell in a gully because you didn't see it, and it was right in front of you? In the time you ran into those Comanche squaws, they peeled you like an onion. Well, that was because I had a red shirt on. You know how Indian women go for red? Yeah, red pants, too. Remember, Billy came back in nothing but his underdrawers. And sporting a brand new case of calluses where they should hardly ever grow. You know, Barney, being a cook, you're safe. Right. I don't want to be safe. There's no fun in being safe. Look, Charlie's going to be back any time. I can't take his job. Will you tell him that, Mr. Chris? Excellent stew, Barney. Marvelous flavor. You have a real touch? Well, I'm beat. I'm going to hit the sack. Yeah, me too. Say, Barney, uh, you're going to fix us something special for breakfast? Yeah. Poison ivy salad, a very tasty dish, even tastier than my stew. Robin? Robin, if you're mad at me, please don't be. 
I only want to help you, Robin. Robin? you go to her, dear? I do. Every day when I put her in the ground. I mean, join her where she is now, dear. I can't. I told you she's dead. So are you, Robin. No. You have been, honey, for a long, long time. You're a bad man to say that. Honey, you died at the Glovers. I'm not dead. Being dead is awful. Only for awful people. And maybe not even for them. <laughs> but surely not for a dear little girl like you. You were frightened. Maybe that's why you couldn't find your way. There's nothing to be afraid of. And that's a good thing to know. Robin, honey, show me. Show me where they laid your mama to rest. Show me, dear. Show me, dear. Here, dear. On the other side of it. Mr. Halloran. On this side, dear. No one, I think. Dying is a natural thing, you know. To worry about it. it's like sleeping, or eating, or growing. What's to be afraid of? Who's afraid of getting bigger, <laughs> or going to sleep? Sometimes I think being born is a kind of a dying. You know, you die there and live here. Through here, you go back there. Now, I don't know whether these things are true or not. I'm an old man. Some people say I'm a little cracked in the head. But Rob and I know one thing for sure. There's a God in heaven. And he's not going to give his children a bad deal. He can't. He's our father there. So he's got to love us. What are you looking for? Well, you might say a sign to show you the comfort you've missed all these years. Place you've been wanting to go. I'm cold. I'm going to the Glovers. I don't want to stay here with you. Wait, Robin. Please, wait, Robin. Gotta be here somewhere. Boom lied to me. Robin, dear, you said you could read. Robin Mercy Rossiter, 1840, 1846. It's me. Yes, darling. The comfort you've missed all this time is waiting for you.